Has Yu-Gi-Oh gotten better or worse over the years? Find out in today's episode of Dragon Ball Z. The answer just might surprise you. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as well as that ding-dong notification bell so we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder. No normal intro today because we got a lot to discuss in this video. I just want to get into it, but I hope you're having a fantastic day and I really appreciate all of the support. I really truly mean that. So what inspired this video was that I was playing Call of Duty, specifically Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered the other day. For like the 50th time, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to re-download this game and try it out again even though it's based on dedicated servers and peer-to-peer -peer servers, allegedly. And I wanted to go back because the new CODs are just so overly complicated in their menus. Modern Warfare 2 2022 edition, it, uh, it looks like a Hulu page, like all the menus and screens make no sense. The user interface is garbage. You know, you look at the original Modern Warfare 2 or COD 4, and like the menu is perfect. Well, I go back to Modern Warfare Remastered and I realize, oh yeah, this version of Modern Warfare Remastered is ass because getting uh, one bursted by an M16 with stopping power is really toxic. Uh, the time to kill is way too fast because when you don't have those peer-to-peer -peer server connections and you don't have host, which makes you feel like a god, you don't feel like you can eat as many bullets, so it's really toxic. Now, what made me bring this video in to the surface because I was like, you know what? COD used to be so much better back in the day. Then I started thinking, you know what? Has Yu-Gi-Oh gotten better or worse as time has gone on? You know, I've been playing this game competitively at least two weeks before the Fusion deck got changed to the extra deck. I've mentioned this several times. So I've been playing this game for competitively for 15 years. I'm 26, I'll be 27 in October. It's so almost 16 years. And I've seen the game change a lot. I've seen for years where people have said, Synchro's ruined the game, Exceed's ruined the game, blah, 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 blah. But I started thinking about if Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't change over the years, right? Like if it was still the game as it was in 2002, 2005 GOAT format, uh, and we didn't have all of these different summoning mechanics, would the game be as popular today as it is with all of these different mechanics and rules? And I think the answer would have to be no. Because if you think about it, even though GOAT format and just older Yu-Gi-Oh formats in general were slower formats and you didn't know by like turn two, turn three, if you won the game, you usually had to play longer. Uh, I was talking with uh, our homie that we always bring up, Valley D, aka Big Bruce 94 shout out to my homie. Um, we were trying to film uh, a clip for my Yu-Gi-Oh podcast series, which is coming back. Thank y'all for answering the community post on that. Um, and I was trying to record the audio, the audio came out all messed up, but one of the things that he mentioned was that, you know, back in the day, you usually didn't know if you won or lost the first game until you were about 15 to 20 minutes into that game. Whereas now in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, the game is so much faster that you'll usually know by turn two, turn three, or with things like King Calamity or just FTKs in general, turn one, if you've lost the game or not. You can usually look at your opening hand and decide, yeah, I'm gonna go to the next game. At the same time, even though the game is a lot faster and power creep has just exploded out of control, many would argue in the game, there is a type of skill to that. You know, if the opponent hits you with, you know, let's say that they're just playing Synchron, Vomit out the field, whatever, and they hit you with King Calamity on your turn, you can't activate any cards or effects. You don't have to show your opponent what you're playing. You can scoop, you don't have to play any cards. Now the opponent's on the back foot because they can, sure, they can side deck generically good going second things like whether it's Kurakara or Kaiju's Lava's Dark Ruler, evenly, whatever, if they're playing those cards. But if they aren't, they don't know what you're playing. So they don't know how to side deck. And even if they do side deck things like Dark Ruler or Evenly Match, what if those cards don't hurt you with whatever deck you're playing? You know, I would argue that things like Dark Ruler no more, don't really hurt Rescue Ace. And if you're playing Rescue Ace, you set a bunch of back row. Now, well, now the opponent has to guess, okay, they're playing Rescue Ace or Labyrinth or Trap Trick. And they have to kind of, you know, go down the process of elimination. They try and hit you with Evenly Match and you've got the negate for it. It's like, well, now like that's out of the water and they could lose that game two because of that. And then game three is when many would argue the match really begins. And I think that that's really true, especially for this current format that we're in, that a lot of people have stopped side decking 
uh, things for time. One, because now we have 45 minutes. And two, because the, the format is such a blowout format, which I would agree with, where it's like whoever wins the dice roll and they go first game one, they're probably going to win that game. The opponent's going to go first in game two. They're going to win that game. And then game three is where it really begins, where that that might be where the grind is or just one player is going to get blown out. So really games should be taking as long because of that. I still side deck for time just because with my dog water luck in this game, I'm probably going to go to time and the one time that I don't side deck to go into time, I'm going to lose because of it. <laughs> and so I started thinking about like, what if, for example, we had GOAT format in 2023, but we had the speed of Yu-Gi-Oh! as it was in GOAT format. And if we didn't have these new summoning mechanics, would these newer decks be as powerful? And I think the answer would be no. And I think that's where Yu-Gi-Oh! would be stale if they didn't change things because decks that don't have access to exceeds or links or whatever, now those things no longer exist. Maybe they're played as a sub-engine for all of the decks in the game that revolve around fusions. You know, think about it. Fusions have been in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! since the beginning. Well, if we didn't have any of these new summoning mechanics, every deck would be fusion-based. And all of the decks that are fusion-based are probably tier zero, i.e. Branded, Chimera, uh, Shadals, you name it. And so I think that the game would be really stale in that regard because you have to think like, damn, every format we go into now is just going to be fusion-based. Like, whatever deck that can abuse fusions or has the best fusion spells is going to win because the extra deck inherently is a resource that is always available to you at your fingertips. You know, that's what made Yu-Gi-Oh! so much of a faster game. Like, why do you think basically all of the new summoning mechanics we got were extra deck based? Because the extra deck was always available to you. You know, back in like, you know, let's say 2007 with Airblade Turbo, there was nothing to play in an extra deck. It was still called the fusion deck and you didn't have a limit as to how many cards you could play. You know, the old DS games always capped you out at like, I think 30. Uh, even though you could actually play as many as you wanted, you just were limited to three copies of a particular card unless it was hit. And so decks wouldn't revolve around using cards out of the extra deck because the main deck was all that they needed to be good. You know, you look at Return Dad before we got Synchros, the main deck was strong enough on its own to be good with Dark Ruler, Allure of Darkness, Return from the Different Dimension. Now, dimension? I sound like I was Southern there. Granted, I am from Florida, but still. <laughs> dimension Fusion. You know, things like that. You had these powerful main deck cards. And if you think about it as well, when you look back at like old formats like GOAT, Inherently, GOAT format has changed even today in 2023. People back in the day used to think a Solemn Judgment was a bad card until like 2008-ish and 2009-ish when you started having the Solemn Judgment Wars and whoever played their Solemn Judgment first probably lost if both players had three copies of Solemn on the board. But it was seen as bad back in like GOAT format and, you know, basically before 2008 because it was like, damn, you catch your life points half to negate one card. Now you look at GOAT format tournaments today Every deck, if they can play it, is going to play three Solemn Judgment because it's seen as a good Omni Negate card. Stops a summon, stops everything. It wasn't like that back in the day. But as more people have gotten into the game, as the knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh! has exploded because now we have things like YouTube, Reddit, what have you, you have these other options available to you. Whereas you didn't have like all these unofficial simulators back in the day. If you wanted to test a card in your deck, you'd have to go and trade or buy it and then test it in your main deck at Locals and go from there. So in that regard, I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! has gotten better because the ability to have the knowledge at your fingertips now, whether it's looking up something on the internet and or trying out an interaction on an unofficial simulator uh, or looking up a combo on YouTube, that does make the game more accessible. Now, is the game really for players, for people seven years of age and up? Uh, no, I, I would say it's more like the OCG and that was probably a marketing tool in the TCG because if you say 12 and up, then, you know, even though the show's directed towards kids, not as many kids will get into it because it's 12 and up. Whereas in the OCG, it was like 12 or 13 years of age and older. That's what Yu-Gi-Oh! was advertised to. And that makes sense, especially for all the combos. Like, do you think a little seven-year-old is going to know about like inherent summons and chain links and damage step and damage calculation? Hell, can a seven-year-old even subtract 4,000 life points in 2,000 life points? Like, when I was in first grade, we didn't even do multiplication until I got into third grade. Uh, so, like, we were learning how to count to 100, basic addition, tying our shoes, like, not digging in our ass crack on the playground. Like, <laughs> basic stuff. Like, I don't think a seven-year-old kid 
could fundamentally get into Yu-Gi-Oh! today in 2023 compared to something like 2002, 2005, whatever kind of earlier format you want to name and have a good time. You know, back in the day, I could pick up any deck, you know, Edison format, what have you, and inherently learn how to play the deck just instinctively. It wasn't hard. You know, with windups, as long as you knew how to do the Shockmaster combo, you were good. You know, you drop out two, you call spells and monsters, you won the ball game. Now it's like, okay, you want to pick up Rescue Ace? Well, you got to go look up YouTube combos. You got to you got to know why they play Proxy F Magician. If you don't, then you're considered bad. Uh, you have to know all these interaction points. Uh, you need to make sure that you're playing smart and like playing around hand traps, whether it's Imperm, Droll, what have you. You want to activate your stuff in the draw on standby phase. Whereas because the card pool was less and because decks weren't as complicated, you know, you could pick up quick draw synchron and just look at a list and kind of have an idea of how it works and through play testing, get better at that. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I feel like overall Yu-Gi-Oh has gotten better. I think if it didn't evolve, it wouldn't be as popular as it is today, but many people will say it's gotten worse, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. And at you know, at the end of the day, I love this game. I've been playing it for over a decade. And, you know, there there are things that I wish were better. You know, I always think back to what my dad said when I was playtesting Cash Tier against him with their full power. And he said, Avery, this is not the same game I that we got into together all those years ago. This is some shit. <laughs> so, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.